What is good, all my joy walkers? I'm the that you guys are back i hope you guys are living in the joy of the lord and enjoying it this was supposed to be posted on monday but your girl had exams i had exams and i had work back to back so i didn't even have the strength to post it on monday so let's just pretend we're here on a monday when it's actually thursday this is episode two of overcoming life struggles and i'm so glad that we're back i'm on this couch because i want to get personal with you guys if you haven't figured out you guys are the main character in this playwright i told you we were covering christmas as a playwright of the birth of christ you guys are the main character in this story you are the marys in this story now there is a popular saying that there is no i in team you can't just have a you in team it's all about everybody a part of your team that that is so true however before there is a team there is a you before anything there is the individual there is just you right just like Mary Mary probably had her people around her she had some of her people that were gonna be on her team some were added in however this team was not properly formed it was not properly formatted until Mary got into the correct posture until she heard from God until she heard from the angel listen to the message and obey and said so it be unto me that's when her team was formatted that's when the team got around her and just like Mary, just like the main character, we may already have our team around us. They may be like the people we least expect. They may be the person that we pass up all the time because we don't think we have anything in common with them. They may be the person that we think that we they have like a vendetta against us. It's the people that we least expect. And it's also the people that we already kind of expected from, kind of have our eye on, right? But we just needed, you know, a reason and a purpose to actually add them in our team. Our team could be around us, but it won't be formed until we get into the proper posture in which God needs us to be so we can accept this purpose and this calling, right? So you're probably asking now, what is the proper posture? What did the main character or Mary have to look like or be like in order for her to accept this purpose and get her team formed for her to get her support around her? I'm glad you asked. Let's look into this. I got my notes, y'all, so I won't forget nothing. So the first thing I'm going to say is changes, the training. Now, Mary definitely has to go through changes in training. Let's talk about a woman who has not known a man who is a virgin to now she has to carry around a child and still say that I I have not known a man and be, be, be able to convince people that this happens straight by the Holy Ghost. This is probably why, this is definitely why um, Joseph kept her in a private area, um, kept her, you know, hidden because he didn't want anybody to make a public spectacle out of her or make um, light of the situation when he already knew what it was. But think about the changes that you would have to go through from being someone who did not know something to now you fully have to be in mother mode, nurture mode. You have to carry the weight of a child and you wasn't even able to, um, you didn't even go through the process of even making a child or knowing a man thinking about think about those changes and even having to hear the first um time someone was saying to you that hey you're going to carry the savior think about the changes that you have to go through mentally for you to understand that even afterwards when the shepherds were telling her how great that this baby was going to be she still had to ponder on her heart like think about those changes so such as it was with her it has to be with us as well it may not be um those specific changes but god has to send us through a change and a training for us to be in the correct posture so he can know that we'll be able to take on the goal and the folk um the goal and the point and the purpose that he is trying to give us he's not going to give us something if we continue to fail the training or we fail this test and this that and the third he has to make sure that we're able to do it right he has to be he has to make sure we're able to do it so i know we complain about 
um, we hear that God is calling us and tugging at our heart. And we're wondering why we're feeling all these convictions and why this was never bothering us before, but now it is. And why I was always hanging out with this person, but now for some reason, I'm just not feeling how um, this person is. We're wondering, okay, what's going on? These are the changes that our God is trying to send you through, the training he's trying to send you through in order for you to be able to take this purpose. Even things that... Um, you got you are abandoning the things that you always carried before and now you feel a sense to abandon ab abandon it this is the training God is taking you through everything that is going to stop you from seeing him doing exactly what you need to do in his purpose in his will anything that's going to take the focus too long or too strongly off of his purpose and will he's going to train you and change you in order for you to be able to accept it and it's all up to you to want to accept it you can decline it you have the option he's not a force for god but let him know don't play around with it okay i'm starting to regret this natural lighting but anyway the next thing is your willingness are you willing to do it and i know there have been people even me i'm talking about myself right somebody asked me to do something at my job and I really don't want to do it like I'm not willing to do it but I feel forced right I feel forced to do it just because like you know it's my job I'll just do it anyway I don't want to do it but I'll do it anyway just like I'm just gonna bring up the issue of tithe right people still are having the debate are you supposed to do it by force is this by tradition or are you supposed to do this in willingness right and I'm just gonna say in everything do it with willingness like I said our God is not a force for God he's not gonna force your hand to do anything we have the option of choosing our life choosing what we want choosing how we feel we need to to do it right he's not gonna force us but if we're willing if we feel God tugging in our heart if we feel that he's calling us if we know that he's calling us why not be willing and if you're not like I said before just a few seconds ago don't play around with it his purpose his goals the things involve people involve um, generations involve your own family right don't play around with it. What he's trying to do through, do through you can potentially break through your whole family from generational curses. Can potentially, you know, you could potentially go into a whole different cut in it and stop, you know, the, the um, what do you call it, the starvation over there. Don't play around with it. He needs to know. But if you're going to do it, you have to be willing. Don't be like, oh, this is forced. Because please know, please know what you won't do in willingness and in faithfulness, he has somebody else who will do it in willingness and faithfulness, okay? Okay? Just the so next thing know. is nurture. And for nurture, we're going to use the parable of the traveler who went away into a faraway country and he left talents with his servants, his own servants, according to their several ability. He left one with five. He Oh, sorry. <laughs> he left one with five. He left one with two and he left one with one. Now there was an expectancy of them to do something with these talents. He wasn't just giving it to them um, just to have. He could he's he's rich he could have somebody store away his his um goods himself he could have did that himself but he was expecting something more after that right now the person who had the five talents turned around and he made his five talents ten talents and the person who had two turned around and made his his two talents four talents now the person who has one i don't know if it was shame i don't know if it was guilt i don't know if it's because he was lazy but i'm gonna guess it's a combination of all three he hid the talent that his serve his his traveler his king his his what do you call it his lord gave to him right and he had this excuse of why um he hid the talent and of course he was very disappointed in him because he was like if you knew i was going to return and if this was your reasoning of why um you didn't do you know if you didn't make the return investment on my 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 talent this reason should have gave you more reason to actually give me more talents. And then he, you know, he cast him out and all of those things. Such as it is with this, this goal and this focus and this purpose. God is looking for somebody who is going to nurture the purpose and the goal, right? Just like Mary had to learn how to nurture the, the child that was growing into her. Although he was holy, although all of those things happened, even after he was given birth to, she still had to nurture him. 
God is not looking for someone who is going to take the goal, accept the calling, and say yes, and then put it on the shelf for like four seasons <laughs> and we're at, keep asking god uh lord what am i supposed to be doing it's on the shelf what are you doing i told you what to do he's looking for somebody who's going to nurture this thing it's going to invest in it it's going to watch it grow watch it continue to produce things watch it continue to multiply that is what he's looking for he's looking for someone who's going to nurture it not someone who is going to hide the calling no matter how extreme it is how much we think okay why would somebody do this? He's looking for someone who is not going to hide it, but actually get his return investment on it, okay? And then the last two things, well, the last thing is trusting God. And you know, if nothing else says trusting God, Proverbs 3, 5 is the reason <laughs> for the season. Trust in God with all your heart and lean not, into, lean not into thine own understanding. Let's talk about how you have to First of all, Mary was like, she didn't even like the salutation that was given because she has never known something like this. True, she was obedient to God. True, she, she was a servant of God. However, she had never known or had an encounter such as this. She didn't understand the salutation. However, when things were told to her after the, the prophetic words after it, and after she knew who was giving her this instruction, she had to trust in God. She said, so it be unto me. She trusted in him. Although she didn't understand she couldn't lean on to her own understanding because she was probably like the whole way i don't this does not even add up like this adding is not adding she had to trust in god the whole time because of remember we talked about the favor to do the impossible because of the impossibility of this task she had to learn how to trust in god and not lean on her own understanding but lean on to god's and then obedience is to is proverbs 3 6 in all thy ways acknowledge him and he would direct that path right she acknowledged him in everything and this is something that she had to do because she is carrying someone holy she is doing something that's impossible she is doing something that she herself cannot she 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 doesn't have her hand in it she is the vessel so she has to acknowledge god in all her ways in order for her to keep the correct posture right in order for her to be able to do this whole thing she has to acknowledge god in all her ways and be obedient to him so those are the how many things is that one two three four five things willingness nurture changes trust in god and be obedient if we hear God calling us, if we hear God saying that, hey, this is what I want you to do next, we have to be in the correct posture. These five things, we have to be in those correct postures in, in order to hear. We have to be able to go through the changes and the training. We have to be willing to do it and not feel like we're being forced. We have to be able to nurture the calling and the training. We have to be able to trust in God and we have to be able to be obedient. I'm so glad that y'all stay here and watch this and, and watch this video. If you like this video, if you like something you heard, make sure you comment and let me know what's really speaking to you. I love talking to my community. I love getting to know y'all. So tell me what's really speaking to y'all. If you want to clip this video, make it a real, make it a TikTok. I don't care. Share this video, like it, and thank y'all so much. And don't forget to subscribe. Thank y'all so much for watching episode two of Overcoming Life Struggles. Peace out. Bye. Bye.